Good morning. Good Wednesday morning to you all. Halfway there almost. Of course, um, I haven't went to work this week. Uh, I've taken a week off. Tomorrow, um, we will bury my brother. And so, uh, I've been preparing for that this week. Mentally, emotionally, physically, just getting ready to say, I'll see you later, Ricky. I know I will. Uh, this week, we're studying about who God is. God has revealed himself in his creation and through his word. And those two things along with the work of the Holy Spirit is what calls people to salvation. God saves. His plan of salvation has a purpose and an outcome which the Father has preordained. He's known before the beginning of time what his plan of redemption was and who is going to be redempted. I pray that you are one that is called by God to know him, to fellowship with him, to be sanctified to him. And uh, before we start this uh, section two, which is uh, titled Judge of Right and Wrong, which is another attribute of God, he's a judge, <clears throat> I think we should go to him in prayer. Dear Father God, we come to you this morning praising your name and we praise you because of who you are we are learning this week more about who you are but we come this morning praising you for what we know about you we know you are the creator we know that there's none above you we know your son, Jesus Christ, paid the price for our salvation. We know that you are merciful and gracious, that you bless us with your kindness and your meekness and your gentleness and your long-suffering. Lord, all the attributes that describe you are good perfect and we thank you for your perfection God because your perfection is our rock we stand on the fact that you don't change that you are God and you will always be God and you are the judge of all forgive us dear God for the sins that we've committed Forgive us, dear God, for not knowing your will and for being selfish and choosing our own will. Guide us through your Holy Spirit, Father, so that we may be sanctified to you and that we may do your will and please you. We thank you for this lesson and I pray that someone is encouraged to seek you and know you more intimately. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. Amen. Okay. Section 2. Judge of right and wrong. Section 2a says all humanity must face God as judge. And this is from Romans chapter 2, verses 12 through 16. And Romans 2 and 12 says, For as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. 
and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. And verse 16 says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. <clears throat> so the commentary reads, Biblically speaking, there are only two groups of people in the world. Jews and Gentiles. Jews were given the law to guide them in what is meant to be God's special people. Gentiles did not have the benefit of the revelation provided by the law, but they were the recipients of the revelation of God provided to all humankind in creation. In this passage in Romans, Paul groups Jews and Gentiles together concerning the issue of God's judgment. No one is accepted. Gentiles have sinned without the law and as a result would perish apart from the law, reaping in themselves the consequences of their choices which have been made known to them by God, by God's natural revelation. The Jews have sinned under the law and are condemned by the consequences inherent in the law. So God is judge. And he's going to judge all. Jews by the law and Gentiles without the law. But Gentiles know there's a God because creation testifies to the fact that there's a God. Okay, section B, the holy judge offers holiness. This is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 17 through 24. And 1 Peter 1, chapter 13 through 16. Ephesians 4.22 says, That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. 1 Peter 1.15 says, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I, am holy. And remember, the title of this is The Holy Judge Offers Holiness. And in these two um, verses, God is encouraging us to be holy as He is holy. It's a, it's a goal. It's attainable. And through God, through his Holy Spirit, we can be holy. We can be set apart to him when we choose him first and put him first in our life. Okay, our commentary says the answer to the sin problem outlined in Romans 1 and 2 is found only in the person and work of Jesus Christ. It is important to stress that when we speak of salvation in Christ, we are not just referring to the forgiveness of sin. Salvation is an end to an old way of life and the beginning of a new one. If anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And that second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 in the NASB. <clears throat> Therefore, this salvation must of necessity have a moral impact on the life of the believer. Humans are moral creatures. This means we are capable of making decisions based on a sense of right and wrong as opposed to being limited to acting instinctively. But that moral nature was corrupted in the fall, resulting in people leading vain, dark, ignorant, blind, dirty lives. See Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 19. Thus, we must be renewed. And part of the renewing of the spirit in the life of the Christian is moral renewal. We must lay aside the old self and be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We are saved by grace through faith, but by faith we must also put on the new man, which is created in righteousness and true holiness. It must be stated here that the term holiness does not refer to a moral code. If we reduce holiness to a moral code, the first question we must ask is, whose moral code will we reference? Even claiming to reference God's moral code creates difficulties because of the multitude of interpretations readers of scripture have concerning such things. Instead, we should think of holiness in terms of Christ-likeness. Holiness is not a result of our efforts to suppress sinful behaviors. Instead, holiness comes as we behold the Lord through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. As we do this, we are being transformed into the image of Christ from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Peter says to fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Because of this grace, we are called as obedient children to no longer conform ourselves to our former way of living, which was governed by the lust of the carnal nature by relying on his sanctifying grace, we can respond faithfully to the command of God to be ye holy, for I am holy. Hallelujah. Okay, we have an insert here titled, Holiness Defined. And it says, by holiness, I mean not fasting or bodily assurity, assurity 
or any other external means of improvement but the inward temper to which all these are subservient. A renewal of the soul in the image of God. A complex habit of lowliness, meekness, purity, faith, hope, and the love of God and man. And that is by John Wesley. Holiness is Christ-likeness. It's the ability and the desire through the Holy Spirit of patterning our lives after our Savior Jesus Christ. It's thinking, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus respond? It's listening to that small, gentle voice, which is the Holy Spirit speaking to us and calling us to obey and pattern ourselves after God. We're made in his image and we should live his image on this earth. That is truth. Any other way of living is sin, is a lie, is against the will of God. I thank you for the time today. Um, like I said, tomorrow, um, I probably won't be um, giving a Bible study tomorrow. I'll be burying my brother Ricky. Um, but I would just like to say that through God and through the Holy Spirit, we walk in reverence of our Creator. It is He who decides the coming and going of man. He allows it, and he takes it away. So I thank you for your time today. Uh, be blessed, be comforted by the Holy Spirit. Walk in peace and sanctification. And seek to know the will of God for your life. Thank you, and have a great day.